So when we talk about the symptoms, it's actually more like the symptoms of perimenopause. And that includes things like, you know, hot flushes, uh, problems with sleeping, the mood changes, irregular periods, um, you know, uh, the, the, the night sweats and chills. Weight gain is a big one. And, and at some point, I think we do really want to touch on that as well, because a lot of women find as soon as they go into perimenopause uh, and then eventually menopause is that their bodies just doesn't, you know, apart from the obvious stuff, their bodies just doesn't seem to work the same way. They, mm. they find it harder to lose weight. Mm. Um, a lot of women who've never exercised in their life now feel like they have to exercise yeah. because without any kind of dietary changes, they their bodies just change. Uh, and there's obviously obviously a lot of hormonal reasons for it um, which we're going to be talking about today but those are some of like the very the very typical symptoms that happen that occur through perimenopause and perimenopause you know can last anything from a year to 14 years Welcome to the ADP Project. You're with your host, Steve and Jeff. And Elisma, good to have you back again. Yeah, it's Yay. great to be back. Uh, it's been too long. And the nice thing is is that um, uh, we, we like to get the real brains in here from time <laughs> to time. So it's, it's good to have you back in. Um, for those that don't know you, obviously, you're the hostess with the mostest that comes in and sets us all straight. Um, it's funny because I think I was asking you before, you, you, you lecture all over uh, the world. Well, a lot more before COVID. Um, but you, I said, how do people you know sort of present you how do they talk about you what are you known for because my understanding was is that it was always about gut health with, with you which you are definitely an expert in but you said to me and correct me if I'm wrong no Jeff um, I'm the person that they bring in to connect the dots you're sort mm -hmm. of known as the person that connects the dots right that's right. so you know and, and it's it's good to have you here on this podcast ultimately far more qualified well certainly than me and steve is very qualified as well too but but we're talking about menopause mm. um which is obviously a topic that we get a lot of requests about and not just from females and this is the interesting thing as well too i mean living with a significant other a mum, you know a partner that's going through it um not just obviously the the woman that's going through it as well too yeah. I now, mean, are we allowed to say that? Because J.K. Rowling's got massive trouble. Oh, for yeah, that. she did say that. Uh, called a woman a woman. Remember that? I know. <laughs> Can we refer to it as biological females? Oh, I th I'm not sure what we know. need to do. Look, I'm not here to offend anyone. No. Honestly, I'm not. Um, Is it vulva owners? I don't that, know. That was another one. Well, I don't know. That, 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 that always confuses that me with people that drive yeah. cars. They're boxy, oh, Volvo. but they're good. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and an iced Volvo uh, sounds. It's oh. a biscuit. Oh, it's a Vol <laughs> I was like Volvo. Volvo? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so in terms of, um, yes, people who... Um, biological females? Is that... XX uh, chromosome owners? Yep. Yeah. See, the thing is, is that I believe in absolute truth. See, I think you're making it just to complicate it. Um, yeah. I, I hope I just speak for all women that I just like to be called a woman and then that's the end of it. Okay, woman. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally get it. And yeah, look, we make light of this, but yeah. in terms of, um, yes, this is a, obviously a very, very, very in-depth topic mm. and very important topic. And guys, where do you want to start? Oh, I mean, I always started, and, and Liz and I were just talking before this podcast, so, and, we, and we just found this beautiful graph of a woman's brain the, the change in a woman's brain that occurs during menopause, it blew me away. Yeah. And I mean, you said, and I'm just quoting you here, this should be on a poster, you know, and you said that because of the changes that occurs, it's dramatic. It blew me away because I thought, oh, yeah, there's got to be some changes. But um, I'll get Matt to put a graphic up for those who are watching us here. And you know, this is a beautiful picture here. And um, it looks like that, Matt. Uh, very, very interesting about all the changes in the brain. So there's a lot of things going on. And, and anxiety, and, depression. And they call this the change of life, obviously. And for mm. people who, especially for our male listeners who want to actually get clued up on this, yeah. is that menopause is obviously the change of life for females uh, as they stop ovulating and mm -hmm. we've got um, uh, postmenopausal and perimenopausal yep. and all that sort of stuff as well too but females um, uh, obviously their hormonal cycle it can create huge changes not just in in, in um, you know the reproductive system but mm -hmm. also as you said in the brain mm -hmm. I mean it's got such wide-reaching effects so um, anyway we sort of got that base there and it's typically menopause happens in, in females you know a, it can happen you know, even in the 30s and what have you, yeah. but typically, typically on average. sort of around yeah. 51 on average, right? 45 so, to 55 is right. kind of like the range. Yeah, yeah. So 
obviously, Steve, you know, and there's lots of jokes here, but the jokes come out of dealing with, obviously, mm. a difficult circumstance. So Tony's mum had menopause and Tony was a young teenage girl at the time, which is obviously fantastic hormonal surges on both ends of the spectrum. Oh, yeah. She said it was a living nightmare being at home. Mum was just irrational and erratic and moody and, you know, just, yeah. So uh, can uh, have Elizabeth's got a great list of the symptoms that occur yeah. during menopause. So. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, a lot of the symptoms, you know, what we're very familiar with is, of course, the uh, hot flushes. And I think before I go into the symptoms, I, you, you kind of touched on it a little bit, Jeff, about perimenopause, that a lot of the stuff that we think is menopause is actually perimenopause. So menopause is kind of like when everything stops and you've gone through it. Yeah. So when we talk about the symptoms, it's actually more like the symptoms of perimenopause. And that includes things like, you know, hot flushes, uh, problems with sleeping, the mood changes, irregular periods, um, you know, uh, the, the, the night sweats and chills. Weight gain is a big one, and, and at some point I think we do really want to touch on that as well because a lot of women find as soon as they go into perimenopause uh, and then eventually menopause is that their bodies just doesn't, you know, apart from the obvious stuff, their bodies just doesn't seem to work the same way. They, mm. they find it harder to lose weight. Mm. Um, a lot of women who've never exercised in their life now feel like they have to exercise yeah. because without any kind of dietary changes, they their bodies just change. Uh, and there's obviously a lot of hormonal reasons for it um which we're going to be talking about today but those are some of like the very the very typical symptoms that happen that occur through perimenopause and perimenopause you know can last anything from a year to 14 years mm. so and wow. i think this is why um wow. this is such an important podcast for for men as well because as you mentioned you know uh it's some, someone's partner someone's mother mm -hmm. or that that goes through this and it can carry on for quite some time and mm -hmm. so it's good if there's um more understanding around this um so that it's you know we we understand why um the women in our lives you know all of a sudden change because of all that stuff change. in the brain oh. that changes. I mean, well. that's a huge amount of change oh, that happens at, at it is. once. I mean, it's, it's called many paws because it's like being mauled by a tiger. Um, <laughs> you know, for sometimes, I mean, again, everybody's different and I make, I make light of it, but obviously yeah. the hormonal fluctuations in this are like, you know, teenage girls, teenage boys, you know, mm. and, and, and when you've got hormonal surges and, mm. and, and things aren't on an even keel, um, it can have a huge impact on so many things, including mood. Yeah, so. and, and Minos is Greek for, for monthly. If, if you wanted to know that, you probably didn't. No, um, but, did but And pause means to stop. So it's, a, it's yeah. from a Greek origin. You know, I worked in Richmond in Melbourne for years, so I knew, knew the language pretty well back then. You don't need more. Okay, so let's say someone's thinking, that, you know, they're, they're 40-something and they're thinking they may be going through perimenopause. Can, is there a way to test for that? Can they ask for tests from their doctor or something, FSH, LH, anything like yep. that? Yeah, so there, there are blood tests that, that one can do to kind of like see whether you're in that perimenopause causal phase. Uh, tests can't tell you how long it's going to last or when, you know, when it's going to end or, or anything like that. But typically, um, uh, we measure for FSH and LH, which are two hormones produced by the pituitary in the hypothalamus. Mm -hmm. um, and so typically what will happen is estrogen levels don't actually change that much early in perimenopause, but the FSH and LH levels change because that's like the brain communicating with the ovaries to make estrogen. Right. So as the ovaries start to slow down, the brain actually has to scream louder at the ovaries to make that estrogen. So whereas, you know, in, in women's reproductive years, everything works quite well. So the brain doesn't have to release a lot of this FSH and LH to make hormones. Yeah. As we go through perimenopause, it's like, it's like the ovaries stop listening to the brain. So mm -hmm. the brain has to start screaming at the ovaries. And that's the increase levels of FSH and LH that we see. Yeah. Now, FSH increases a lot more than LH. Um, I think it's typically if it's over... And I don't really understand the units that they measure, but, you know, from 30 to 150, I believe, is kind of like the range. If it's in that range, you're in perimenopause. Because yeah, usually right. the levels are like 2, 3, 4 okay. mm. to 7. So, so what does follicle-stimulating hormone actually do, FSH? What does that actually do in the body? Like, what's it for? What's, As what the name suggests, for? it uh, stimulates follicle Follicles. release. Right. Now, now, in a woman's cycle, if they're cycling, on day 14, they'll release an, ov uh, uh, an ovary. Uh, sorry, <laughs> release an egg <laughs> from, from the, the ovary. ovary. That's right. Yeah. 
And so FSH and LH work combined, they spike in the middle of your cycle and you release an egg. Now, during perimenopause, perimenopause as you pointed out, they're like, the ovaries become like teenagers. You have to scream at them to do something. Right. So uh, if you can put, put, it, put it in those sort of terms. So elevate it again, like when you're beginning your journey, yeah. same as at the end. Right, it's like lots and lots of follicle stimulating hormones sort of being yep. released. Yeah, right. that's right. Which can cause some issues. Yeah, absolute issues, and it changes the brain dramatically. And this is this is the whole scary. It changes, of course. Eventually, estrogen levels will drop, which causes a new set of physical symptoms. Yeah, like low, low estrogen, you can get physical symptoms aside from the brain, like you can get vaginal dryness. Yeah, um, and of course, you can get body changes. Now, estrogen keeps a woman in that sort of I'll call hourglass shape for those who are listening. Um, but with that decline estrogen, you tend, women tend to put on fat around their waist, mm. which is very dangerous because the, the biggest cause of death in postmenopause women is heart disease. Wow. They catch up to men. They're really? a little bit protected before that because yeah. the estrogen protects them. But when they lose the estrogen, mm. they put on visceral fat, which is the fat around the waist, and that becomes very dangerous for them. And so that's where we talk about weight gain. It's sort of like, sort of like in weight gain in the wrong spot. Right. You know, they, they don't get bigger biceps, unfortunately. They they get bigger waists, and that's quite dangerous. Yeah. yeah. All right, so this pro- program is proudly brought to you by Yippie Kaye. Yippie Kaye! Now, Steve. Yes. Off the top of your head, I mean, listen, you don't know what Yippie Kaye, but Yippie Kaye is a pre workout that you take. Um, it's our product. Yes. Okay. So you've got to come up with an ad in five seconds for Yippie Kaye. Ready? Go and go. Yippee ki yay! Yippee ki yay! Yippee ki yay! I can exercise! Is that a five second ad? That was terrible, okay. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I was no. doing dips! I was, he was doing, doing dips, alright? He was doing dips. Okay, I'll okay. do one, alright? Okay. Um, oh, yippee, you're so. You're so kind, you're so kind, you blew my mind. Hey, yippee, how's that? That's a good one. Right. That's um, cute. What is the. Um, it's Yippee ki yay MF. What does that stand for? Yeah, oh, yippee, you're so fine, you're so fine, you blew my mind. There, there we go. Um, what's the other one, sorry? What? This has has an F, MF at the end. No, of it. not 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 my version, Steve. Oh, okay. Maybe yours, your potty right, mouth. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, let's me your turn. You've got to come up. No, with no, no, no. It's, I, I can't come. You've up never done theatre in the round. No. Have you ever done theatre cre- in the round? I'm not creative. I'll just look like a dumbo, and then you what guys are going to make fun of me. Oh, Steve, you look <laughs> stupid. <laughs> really <laughs> stupid. <laughs> but I love it. Anyway. I love that about you, Steve. You're just prepared to be raw and put it out. No, not. Yippee. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> it's, it's pointless. You're not going to use it, and you're just going to make Okay, I'll do one for you. Um, a little yippy make a lismo. <laughs> Giddy? No. Oh, trippy. To... There we oh, go. Okay. A little to... yippy makes a lismo trippy. That's it. How do you like that? Hey? That's, that's fine. All right. Oh, that's it. You like that? That's beautiful. Anyway, this pr- program was proudly brought to you by three morons, and you'd be <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I think another really uh, uh, important symptom as well is because estrogen is, I mean, we've spoken about this in previous podcasts, but it's needed for that connective tissue and the mm. plumpness in women, it's needed for that plumpness of the skin. Mm. So typically what happens is our skin, you know, the skin becomes thinner, but also that it gets that, um, I might, might mispronounce this, that crepe, is it crepe feeling, yeah. crepe yeah. consistency? Yeah. yeah. Is that how you pronounce Creping. it? Creping. Yeah. 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 So that's that, you know, very wrinkly kind yeah. of um Skin, whether it's you know, it doesn't the have to be your face, to be it can be on the, mm. on yeah, the arms, sit a lot on the arms, and then yeah. where it just all folds over, right? Like it's just like creased. And yep, yeah, yeah. A lot of cosmetic doctors use estrogen creams to reduce to improve the youthfulness of the face, mm. usually estradiol. And there's four different types of estrogen which you can go into later, but estradiol is the more potent one, yeah. And yep. they put it in creams and it's absorbed. And that's one of the ways of uh, hormone replacement therapy. Stuff going mean. through the skin, Steve. Yeah, I know. It's weird, eh? I yeah. know. We, um, there's a story. We're not, we're not, we're not going to go around that again. No, no. Um, but I think, um, okay, so that's obviously, but that would then, is it like a bioidentical hormone? Sort yeah, of that, that's what about? they use. They use bioidentical hormones. So, so obviously safer. then, you know, that, that's great. It protects the skin. But would that have also then a um, accumulation of fat? Um, potentially in those areas where that cream is rubbed into, Steve, or uh, No, it doesn't work like that because women have a higher tolerance to estrogen and yeah. they can still be lean with quite high estrogen. Oh, yeah. You've got to remember the visceral fat is more androgen receptors yes. and the subcutaneous fat that yeah. makes women's breasts and hips and buttocks is more under the skin fat and that has a higher estrogen receptor mm. um, population. So estrogen will tend to put on weight around the breasts and around the buttocks and that gives you that sort of hourglassy figure, mm. which a lot of women aren't as worried about is putting it 
around their waist. Of course, mm. of course, yeah, makes sense. And that, that's just a, a, a you know, a, a quite a, and of course, when you lose that estrogen, testosterone relatively increases, mm -hmm. and so you get more weight or put on visceral fat like so, a man. So then luteinizing hormone, which I understand for men, obviously that's very important for creating testosterone. So mm. it, this starts to surge in women as well too, or does it does it re retreat? What, what's happening with the luteinizing hormone during this period? Well, luteinizing hormone is kind of like in what what pre predominates more in the um, the second half of a woman's cycle, and that's kind of like involved in the release of progesterone. Um, and so luteinizing hormone also st starts to um, increase through perimenopause and progesterone starts to drop off. And I think this is where it also becomes very important, like a lot of uh, women maybe just focus on estrogen as such, you know, uh, because it's quite well known that estrogen is needed for protecting against osteoporosis and, yeah. and, and bone health and things like that. And we f sometimes forget about the progesterone. Um, but uh, the progesterone is often the, um, the hormone that's involved in a lot of the um, anxiety and sleeping issues that, are w that a lot of women kind of like experience uh, post-menopause. Mm -hmm. So doing a combination, if you're going to do bioidentical hormones, doing a combination is, um, in my opinion, uh, a better idea than just doing um, estrogen or progesterone on their own. But of course, it will be very individual from woman to woman, depending on, you know, what's going on for them, which is something that they have to discuss with their um, healthcare professional and all mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. But um, we, we do sometimes forget about that progesterone and it um, it's just as important yeah. than the estrogen. It's vitally important. Was when, when a woman ovulates, that's when the egg itself makes a lot of progesterone. So you get a huge surge in the second half of the luteal phase of the cycle. So if you are on a progesterone cream, doctors will prescribe zero for the first 14 days and then a lot for the for the second 14 days of the cycle. So it mimics the natural cycle of a woman. Um, but, but yeah, estrogen, and you're right, progesterone is very important now. Going through menopause, you, you, you lose that protective progesterone and also you can end up becoming more stressed, which of course leads to rises in cortisol, which is made from progesterone in the body. Right. So you get so a depletion. A, and a further, competing. It's just... It, Depletes it, and competes. Exactly. Yeah. And it's and it's it's a, it's a bad milieu. And we're going to talk about tra treatments later and we've got some really cool ones and very colourful treatments later. Well, and just before we get there as well too, so some questions on menopause. There's nothing that you can do to stop it because you've you've got a certain number of eggs, right? It's like a clock. Yep. So if you've got 20,000 eggs, I don't know how many. About oh. 400. <laughs> That's what you're born with, about 400. Because, I mean, who's going to live 20,000 months, right? I mean, how many years is that? <laughs> you'll, 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 you have about, you know, 35 years of ovulation. Right. Typically, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm 15 to 50. 400 about eggs. That. Yeah, okay. 400 eggs. Yeah. And you but some people might have 200. Some people might have 600. Yeah. Is, is that true? You can. And, and, yeah, and there are less or more. And, and you can get an, an AMH test to see how many or your, with your reserve, your, your ovarian reserve. reserve. Yeah. And the other thing I was going to ask as well, too, I've heard as well that, like, you know, some, some women, I mean, you say this 28-day cycle. But that's, that's not always the case. In fact, I've heard some people that um, uh, their cycle is every sort of 14 to 20 days. Mm. Um, yep. You know, some people um, will, will have their period for uh, a week and a half uh, or even two weeks and, mm. and others, you know what I mean? Like there's obviously there's norms. Um, uh, and <laughs> that's probably a whole new podcast. I mean, we oh, did the, yeah. the, the black and white, you know, P periods in all black and white a while ago, which was a great podcast, which we sort of spoke about these sorts of things. But, but so th this is just standards, if you like. So if you don't fit within this, that that doesn't that doesn't matter. Like no. it's yeah. And that can also uh, change then when you go through menopause, because right. as as you both pointed out, you've got a certain amount of eggs, and so when those eggs run out, that's kind of like when your reproductive years um, end. So if you start, I guess your periods earlier in life, um, then you, you're more likely to go through menopause um, earlier as well. And also, as you pointed out, Jeff, if you've got very short cycles, mm -hmm. like every 14 days or 18 days, you're burning through those eggs a lot quicker as well. And so that can also then bring on uh, perimenopause and menopause, menopause a lot earlier as opposed to some uh, women with longer cycles. So, um, you know, that's kind of like a bit of a predictive mechanism, I guess, um, although it's it's not like that for everyone. Another really interesting one is uh, smoking. So smoking mm -hmm. is a big one that kind of like um, uh, affect, I guess, um, when women could be going through menopause. It apparently, um, apparently can uh, reduce, I think, the time by one to two years that you go through menopause a lot earlier. <coughs> I don't know how much you'd have to smoke to kind of like get that effect, but that definitely seems to be a big 
I guess, lifestyle factor that can bring menopause on a lot earlier. Um, oh, smoking. Smoking, yeah. Smoking, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's not too many things that smoking is actually good for, is there? I mean, <laughs> no. like, I Despite mean, like, it being uh, uh, recommended by doctors in the uh, 50s. I love it. I love it. I, love it. I mean, if you want to be a jockey, uh, mm. stunt your growth and maybe, um, yeah. you know, keep your weight off. Uh, and it's funny because people, oh, oh, weight loss. Yeah, there's also a very sophisticated advanced form of weight loss that you can get from smoking as well <laughs> too, which is called death. Death. Um, <laughs> get to your first and death. Amazing death. weight loss with that. I mean, um, seriously, and you never put the weight back on either. There's only how, one how like study. That? There, there was one study where I found smoking being positive for, and that's for Crohn's disease. Really? Yeah. It knocks out the immune system, particularly the parts that cause Crohn's disease. Another thing you can have effect on, on delaying menopause is, is having kids. Because mm. guess who? Oh, guess, because you stop you stop releasing eggs during that time. Correct, at least for nine and a half months, uh, maybe longer if you breastfeed. It, it maybe a year. So if oh you have, yeah, good point. Yeah, of course, of course. So if you have you know say two kids, um, three kids, you you're delaying it two or three years. Yeah. I mean, imagine someone having you know like in the past mainly, but eight eight kids or something. It, it'll uh, delay you a long time, won't it? Right. You know, ten. You could be so the more, in, more more yeah, you could be popping out kids in your seventies. And that that's what oh. you see. You see those old pictures where the mothers you know got eight or ten kids, and and they're quite elderly yet they're still nursing, mm. and that's because they're ovulating into their well up potentially sixties. Wow. Because mm. remember, you don't stop. You know, you don't just have the baby and you start ovulating. You're breastfeeding, usually not ovulating. Don't take that as a contraceptive thing. But you don't ovulate while your, your prolactin levels are so high. So it delays it a bit longer. So, you know, if you breastfeed for, say, six months, yeah. nine plus six months is over a year wow. times eight, it's like maybe up to 10 years. Wow. So that, that can delay. It. And, and, and a lot of women have kids, you know. So it, it can quite significantly I've delay. I've heard it's quite, quite natural, Steve. Yeah, quite natural, yeah. I've heard. You know, I'm on the pill. I won't get pregnant, so that's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, going on the pill doesn't have the same effect, though. No. No. It doesn't delay no. your, um, yeah. your menopause, unfortunately. No. It's not a natural way to suppress ovulation. No. So that, that's one thing. But, but I mean, with, with menopause, of course, we, we've talked about some of the uh, physical, uh, some of the mental symptoms and, and also hot flashes is probably the worst um, so, well, one of the worst well, Number one complaint, we should yeah. say. Yeah, number one complaint. Yeah. Okay, so, so then in terms of somebody who's either perimenopausal or menopausal, what do you do? Yeah, it's tricky. To, 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 especially to alleviate the symptoms. And obviously I know that people were going, yes, weight gain, yes, mm. um, irritability, yes, mm. some of these other symptoms that you've mentioned as well too. Is there is there a difference in treatment um, in perimenopause, is there anything you can do before you even get there that can can help if you like to prepare your body for the change? Absolutely. Sure. The, the number one thing, in my opinion, is to um, keep your adrenals healthy. Right. Right. Uh, and so there's many ways you can do that. It can be through uh, lifestyle choices, exercise, stress management, what have you. But I think for me, the, the, the biggest, you know, you, you can even look at different demographics. And unfortunately, I don't have a study to prove it. But, but generally, women who... Um, you know, uh, when they when they did look at these kinds of of uh, studies, it was women who, in um, let's say um, more like Asian countries where they did a lot of Tai Chi, you know, those those you know, lot better um, lifestyle choices, better diets. This yep. is going back now 50 years or so, yep. uh, compared to Western women who eat differently. We eat more dairy, we eat more gluten, mm. we more you know, we more go go go. We don't t take time for ourselves, and they do find that Western women, you know, when you when you I guess divide women like that, women who live that typical Western lifestyle, they go, th they go through a lot worse menopausal symptoms because the adrenals take over that hormone production once the, uh, the ovaries stop doing it. Right. And so if you're constantly, um, you know, stressed or busy or go, 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 and, and when we talk stress, I mean, it could even be good stress. You know, you may still love your job, a stressful job, but it's still something that pumps out cortisol or stimulates that adrenaline response. And when all your cholesterol and your pregnenolone and all those base hormones go towards cortisol production, it's not going towards estrogen, progesterone and testosterone mm. production. And so uh, you're going to get more of those fluctuations because mm -hmm. hot flushes is pretty much um, 
It's to do with the estrogen fluctuations, the, right. the rise and the falls, mm-hmm. but then also the increase in cortisol as well. So right. all of that will make hot flushes worse. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you're quoting from a, uh, the article you, you're talking about. It's a Journal of Evidence-Based Integrative Medicine 2019, where it talks about all sorts of, and I'm going to call them alternative, but I don't, they, they shouldn't be. But, you know, it talks like biofeedback, relaxation, mindfulness-based restriction, yoga, all these sorts of things have been shown in the literature to improve menopausal symptoms. And that includes, I mean, we haven't even started with hers, cognitive behavioural therapy. Mm. I mean, all this sort of stuff works. Hypnosis works terrifically. I mean, it's just, it all seems, it's all published in the literature and it works really well. Because you've got to remember this is, and hypnosis was 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 found to be just as um, effective, and I won't mention the name of the drug, but as an antidepressant for reducing hot flashes. Wow. I mean, how cool is that? Yeah, very and, cool. Now, you know, that hypnosis is, is, you know, quite an interesting, but this is a randomised controlled trial. Um, published, you know, um, so 187 people, women, so it worked really well. So, so that alone, and, and what Elizabeth says, is just getting the mind right around mm. this and getting the body health, mental health, uh, is is wonderful. Um, just touching on herbs and spices, there's a great spice that we use for reducing cortisol. Mm. Um, and um, have you got the pasadi there? Or have I got? It? I've got. It, I think I've got, got it. Here. it yeah. Basically, it, it is, of course, uh, saffron. Now, now saffron works, um, and this, this was only published, like, uh, yeah, February 2021, and they gave it to people, and I'll, it basically dropped their cortisol, just dropped it away. The more you took it, the, over three or four weeks, it dropped away dramatically, and wow. so did your anxiety. So, I mean, obviously, um, in cooking, saffron is used quite a lot in, yeah. in Indian and the subcontinent. Yep. Um, is there any evidence to suggest that there's um, a different pattern with regards to menopause and or the effects of, of um, that on their on their population? Yeah, they're, they're, they've tested it in a number of... They didn't test it directly against menopause, and this is why I like this one in a way, because, but they've tested it against the drug that they commonly use for the symptoms of menopause. Right. Um, but I won't go into the drug name, but basically it's a very common one that you would use as an SSRO, very common one for use for depression, and they found it equally as effective. <coughs> okay. And it was 30 milligrams a day. Could, do you think I mentioned the name of the drug or not? Well, I don't think there's a problem with that. Okay. Uh, Prozac. Okay. Um, and, and they measured it against, you know, because remember, the standard dose for Prozac, because it's got a long half-life, is 20 milligrams a day. They even, they even tested against people taking 40 milligrams a day of Prozac, and it was found to be equally as, as effective in the treatment of depression. That's amazing. Amazing. And that's just saffron, and that was a standardised 30 milligram dose in this particular paper. And this is a, a meta-analysis, again, published fairly recently. So this is pretty strong evidence to show that, that just herbs and spices work like these drugs. I tell you, um, Yasi, who works for us in the R&D, oh, yeah. she's from Iran. Iran, she is. And um, at Christmas time, she um, gave us an Iranian present, which was lovely, which is actually just a beautiful bowl of saffron. Oh, my and God. And it was absolutely wow. vibrant and oh. amazing looking. And Tony's made some, some, some curries and some stuff like that with it. But it's incredible herb. Oh. Um, absolutely amazing. And I thought that was a really lovely gift. But um, in terms of, obviously, it's, again, we keep coming back to it, right? Science and the food. Mm. Food should be a medicine. Medicine should be a food. Absolutely. Absolutely. It should be. And and another kind of like aspect in terms of, you know, and again, what we do for perimenopause will depend a lot on the symptoms that any individual woman kind of experience. But uh, another one that I find quite um, important is the uh, GABA receptors. All right. Um, So... GABA is kind of like a, a, a neurochemical uh, that we produce that helps us to sleep. It helps us to be calm and uh, relaxed and, and, and all of that. And this is often, you know, a lot of women will start getting more anxiety issues and sleeping issues as they go through menopause as progesterone drops off. Right. And the reason for that is because progesterone is actually the hormone that's needed to make um, a, a pe- peptide called uh, allopregnenolone. And allopregnenolone activates your GABA receptors in your brain. Right. And then that kind of like amplifies the effect of GABA. So, you know, a typical herb that, for instance, has that same, so as a similar kind of effect is ashwagandha. But there's, there would be other herbs as well. And interestingly, ashwagandha is also like a, an adaptogen or adrenal kind of herb too. So it, it again comes down to taking care of the adrenals, but there's also like, you know, there's, there's lots of other ways to kind of 
um, mimic, I guess, what our hormones used to do if they're not there in yeah. abundance anymore yeah. to kind of help with specific types of symptoms if they become quite debilitating. Mm-hmm. Um, doesn't mean that all women who go through menopause are going to have issues with sleeping. It really, I, f- I find at least that um, you do get a bit of a, whilst, whilst most women share the same symptoms, uh, there's different degrees to how they may experience. For one yeah. woman, hot flushes may be the, mm. the worst thing that they are experiencing. For another woman, maybe the sleep, um, you know, not getting good sleep, it may yeah. be. Yeah. Um, you Which know. Then it sort of becomes a, a self perpetuating problem. But mm. uh, in terms of um, uh, adrenals, really important because your adrenals are taking the load of, of effectively producing the hormones that you need. Yep. And, and so where it might have been made up 20% before, it's now making up, you know. 80%, 100%, I guess, of your hormone load. So cortisol, and, and what you're saying as well too, if your body's producing the stress hormone cortisol, it's taking away from its ability to be able to make um, progesterone and, yeah. and other hormones that are going to keep you more even keel. Mm. So just working, obviously, rest, sleep, um, anti-stress. And I always, I, I like to say, a lot of people say, okay, we'll stress less. I go, well, why not focus on, on laughing more? Mm. Why not watch more funny f- films and go spend time with family and friends and, and, and you know, s- switch off by switching on to something else? Because if I say to you, Steve, and I think I said this to you the other day, okay. don't think, right, in your diet, yeah. don't think about chocolate cake and Mars bars yeah. and, you know. Yeah, that's all you think about. Right? <laughs> Whereas well, if I go, hey, what about, a, what about a fantastic, you know, um, you know, salad with, with you know, f- great chicken breast and beautiful herbs and spices and you know if you focus you know again it comes back down to that you you, you hit what you focus on <laughs> so whether you want to or not the, yeah. the, the body just doesn't understand no no don't do this no actually focus on on the positives the positive reinforcement now it's not until i got much older that i actually recognized that um and, and, yeah yeah and, and, and actually what you said ash again is just just it is such a good suggestion and you know like I, I was looking at, in a different angle to you but what your angle is about looking after the adrenals is vitally important it really really is i mean they, they are going to hold you in good stead for the rest of your life and that sort of thing so herbs like ashwagandha that, that actually you know preser- well, let's just keep it simple preserve the adrenals by de-stressing you by hitting the gaba receptors so you know like if you've ever drunk a few beers before i know no one here would have um, but that hits the GABA receptors. So yeah. that, that gives you that relaxation sort yeah, of thing too. That's why you feel you know, temporarily good when you, when you, good. you know, have alcohol. Or, or you have a Valium or any of the benzodiazepines, yeah. they that's hit right. those receptors. So. Yeah. But another um, really great herb, we're talking about spices, is yeah. turmeric, right? Oh, yeah. And turmeric, yeah. and, and the, the way that I kind Again, of these, look at these that. These subcontinent people have got it going down, right? Oh, I mean, I the know. Indians have got it nailed, right? And they've they got the most colourful herbs. Too. Yeah. That's right, because, because turmeric Vibrant. is kind of like an anti-inflammatory right mm. so i think what we sometimes forget is that cortisol is not just a stress um, hormone it's also an anti-inflammatory mm. hormone so in people who have chronic inflammation you know whether it's gut dysbiosis or um you know bad diet you know we know there's a lot of mm. foods like sugar and dairy and gluten can be very inflammatory if there's a lot of chronic inflammation going on and your body's constantly pumping out cortisol to put out the fires of inflammation again there's less resources to go to make estrogen progesterone and testosterone yeah. and so turmeric is um no, not the only one, but a great anti-inflammatory kind of herb mm-hmm. as well. And that's, that's why with, you know, even with something like menopause, I'm a big b- believer, you, you know, if you have a, the better your lifestyle, the lower the risk is of going, th- going through really bad menopausal mm-hmm. symptoms. And so that is, it comes back down to taking care of your adrenals, stress management, but also, you know, don't let there be any chronic inflammation going in your body. If you've got stuff going on, deal with it. If you've got mm. gut dysbiosis, deal with it. Those things, you know, um, they do catch up with you and it could be catching up with you in your uh, perimenopausal years, you know. So very important True. to kind of like take care of those things. True. Even being overweight is inflammatory. Yeah. So yeah. if you are overweight, uh, yeah. you've got to really try and lose the weight. Um, and, and of course, menopause is going to make that it's matter a bio- worse. Well, 
it's a biochemical trap, right? Because yeah. I mean, again, you know, like your, your hormones are in flux, you, mm. you start putting on weight, yeah. you start stressing about yep. it, then you have some alcohol to make yourself feel good. You can see very, very quickly how yeah. there can be um, negative self-reinforcing behaviours that you can get into, right? Because the temporary temporary fix feels good, but doesn't actually solve the solution. So and in terms of for, for people that are listening to this, and, and again, I don't want to cut across, um, did you want to talk about some more herbs? Because what well, are we, we got heaps on herbs. It's, uh, well, there's so many herbs you can talk about. Well, maybe we can come back to it in a minute then, because I'm, I'm quite interested for people that are listening to this, specifically women, that are going, okay, I have, not specifically women, full stop, I mean, that have, so women that have put on weight or are concerned about the weight gain, as you said before, Steve, mm. they're going, yeah, my, my waist circumference is really, mm. you know, bulged out. Mm. How would you tackle that first and foremost? I mean, again, because I know that exercise, obviously, mm. and diet are very, very important, but... Um, yeah, what would you do? Well, I'll give you the bad news first and then the good news. Yeah. The bad news is it'd always be tougher for a, a peri or post-menopausal woman to exercise because their hormones have been depleted, they're stressed, they may be having hot flushes at night, which yeah. may be keeping them awake. Yeah. Their, Tired, their neurochemistry lethargic. has dramatically changed. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we'll just simplify it to the worst. Yes. And so they're not going to be, be busting to go to the gym like they were. Secondly, they're, they're usually not as young as a 20-year-old who goes to the gym like I saw at the gym this morning. There was thousands Steve, of them. Been, <laughs> I was at the gym this morning. He was yeah. watching a 20-year-old at the gym this morning. Oh, I was that's, watching. That's I wasn't yeah. watching. So oh, yes. I wasn't. Steve. I wasn't. Steve. I only yeah. saw a few photos, all right? It wasn't he's that bad. there. He was eating his cornflakes <laughs> and his <laughs> cardigan. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, yeah, I didn't go there to exercise. Uh, yeah. no, zoom lens he just sits there and eats his breakfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> really creepy, Steve. Yeah, Jeff says, you go to the gym? Very I said, yeah, I was at the gym this morning. Yeah. Every morning. Every morning. Right in front of the leotards. Absolutely. Do they even wear leotards anymore? I don't think so. Right, right in front of the jazzercise. Jazzercise, that's it. Do they do that anymore, Steve? Oh, they used Maybe to in the 1980s gym. when let's yeah. get physical. His, 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 um, his, his <laughs> eyesight's so that? bad, though. I remember that. Oh, do you? With the, with the Olivia Newton-John. What, what do you call John? the scrunchies, the leg scrunchies? Oh, leg warmers. Leg, leg warmers. warmers. Oh, yeah. That's right. Steve's got some. I've got some on now. Do you want me to show you? I'll take my pants off. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, please leave them on. <laughs> please. There we go. But no, that, that, that is exactly right. <laughs> I mean, it's a bit weird, but yeah, every morning he's there. Every uh, morning. That's great. <laughs> I go to the gym every morning. That's all that's all I mean, everyone has to know, you know? He loves aerobics. Love yeah. it. Love it. <laughs> Oz style. Oz oh, yeah, I remember Oz style oh, aerobics. I remember that. Too. Oh, my gosh. Well, was that on the TV, the morning? Oh. Yeah. It, yeah. It, on it, the beach. It was like, seriously, was it? it was like 90s. Porn before the internet. <laughs> I was wasn't going to say that. Yeah, but that's exactly. It, that's kind of. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like it's like the the, the blooming Big W catalogs when you're you know Target catalogs. It's like <laughs> oh straight over the ladies' laundry over. Oh, yeah. What's wrong with you, Steve? <laughs> well, you yeah, you've got problems, right? I, I remember. You should be respectful. Watching this whole aerobics craze going. Is anyone else seeing what I'm seeing here as a 16 year old boy? You know, like it was. I mean, tell, tell me when I asked a guy would want to do aerobics. You know, yeah. Like you know, did you see those aerobics things from the eighties? There, you should oh, flick them up on the it. screen now. Actually, yeah. the the ones with the guys come out all in blue and they're like, oh, they like yeah. kick their legs up as they're dancing up. I'm just like, okay, you know, that, I think it's a they movie. may not, they may look like they're not interested in women, but I guarantee they are. That's yeah. why they're doing it. Or maybe so. they're not interested in the girls. I'm not too sure. Well, see, see, women just go to the gym to work out. Like what goes, what goes you, so on you're doing in it wrong. heads <laughs> is, is just fascinating. What about all the good um, there's one here. thing. It's there's like one thing that goes on in men's. Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm, I'm, and I'm so joking. And you probably want to cut most of this. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, in terms of, in terms of um, where were we, Steve? Oh, yeah, trying to lose weight. Yes, that's right. Uh, okay. That's one of the reasons why people go to the gym, Steve, believe it or not. I oh, know. I, I heard that. I've heard it. That they, Crazy they go to do talk. So, so the, the advice for a woman, you know, who's, say, 51 and 52 is to start doing something. Now, yes, it can be going to the gym, but start going for a walk. Start riding, doing an exercise you enjoy. What, even that's swimming at the beach, some sort of exercise, because the, the odds are against you now to stay lean because the hormones are, you know, you, if, if you're post-ovulation, you're not going to have that wonderful progesterone levels you used to as a kid. So you're going to have to work harder and eat less and eat more carefully. Mm. And that's that's unfortunately the don't, trick. Yeah. And, and don't starve yourself to death. So if no. you, I mean, again, when Steve says eat less, he, he's talking about empty calories, high yeah. sugar calories and things Correct. like that. I mean, for people who aren't, I guess, on the fitness scene, Steve, like we've been for years and talking to athletes yeah. when we say eat less we know that we're 
uh, up, upping your protein, making Correct. sure you're eating plenty of, yeah, of salads and, mm. and, and, and good quality high fibrous foods mm-hmm. um, and, and, re- and, re- and, re- and reducing refined sugars and alcohols and things like that exactly. can help immensely. But we want to give people hope, Steve, and I guess especially people who maybe are, oh man, I'm blown out. I'm going through menopause. Mm -hmm. It's all against me. And Mm -hmm. so they give up. And I don't want that because, Mm -hmm. um, again, we've mentioned some of the herbs. I know you've got some other ones Mm -hmm. as well too, some of the exercises as well too. Is there anything in the top, and I'm probably jumping ahead of some of the stuff here, three things that are, if someone's listening to this, they can take it away and Mm -hmm. they can go, okay, I might not be able to do everything, but I'm going to either take or do these top three Steve, what would be your top three things to do for a, a, a person who's put on weight, yeah. uh, either during um, or, or after the you and, know, sort and, of period? And I'll skip over the exercise and diet thing because sure. we talked about that. Yeah. Um, I would, you know, for a herb for weight, I, I have to say gynostemma. Right. Just as a great herb for losing weight. Right. It's just evidence backed. I mean, yes, on top of the diet and exercise, so I'll, I'll say that twice to, so I won't be out of context, but that herb will really, really help you lose weight. Okay. It's a terrific one. Have yeah. you got any other ideas for just the weight loss side of things? Well, for the weight loss side, I, I don't necessarily have a solution here. No. But there's, a, there's actually a biochemical reason why a lot of women do uh, end up gaining weight post-menopause. And yeah. I guess mm. if we can find a solution, I like to look at everything from a biochemical point of view. And then if sure. we can find a solution for that biochemical thing that's happening then mm. we have a solution right and well so we've got two and a half great minds here so well maybe we can come up with something Am I the half <laughs> no steve <laughs> hey. essentially, essentially what estrogen does is yeah. estrogen activates ldl receptors so ldl uh, is what was always termed as bad cholesterol yep. you know even though it's not quite as simple as that mm-hmm. uh, and so essentially estrogen activates ldl receptors which means you clear a lot of this LDL cholesterol out of your blood a lot quicker Mm. with estrogen, Mm -hmm. right? Now, of course, when... um uh, and, and what those LDL receptors also also does by clearing the cholesterol, the cholesterol then also gets converted into bile acids. Like specifically, huh. it it also upregulates an enzyme called, and I, that's why I have to look here, cholesterol seven alpha hydroxylase. A nice big word. And and what that does is it takes cholesterol or it takes fat and converts it into bile acids. And bile huh. acids is what we need for digestion. Huh. It's what we need for um our you know for for bowel motions. Like if we don't have enough bile, we become con- how many women become oh, constipated yeah. post, you know, yeah. in postmenopause? Mm. And so estrogen plays a role in all of that. It takes it takes that fat, converts it into bile acids. It's like baking the cake. I call it baking the, yeah. the, the bile cake, right? Yeah. Now, if you don't have the estrogen that's baking that cake, then the cholesterol just pulls up, yep. pulls up, mm. pulls up, pulls up. So that's when you get the heart disease <coughs> issues, the clogged yep. arteries, the uh, weight gain, yep. the constipation because you're not making bile acids. Yep. So I guess for me, it was like, okay, well, if we can get something that can activate those LDL receptors, <laughs> then we're kind of like substituting well, what estrogen estrogen used to do and one of the things that does that is growth hormone we know know that growth hormone also decreases as we age yeah 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 Um, is that half every 10 years on average i mean roughly right roughly i don't know it's something declines you know what this is again i get this is this is bro science back in when i was selling (laughs) supplements man yeah halves every 10 years and look i don't think probably is exactly that but it does significantly every 10 years there is a substantial like like it's not 9.5 9.5 you drop no yeah. it's like it's, it's like drops yeah but funny funny that Steve mentioned gynostemma and the only reason I remember this is we actually did a um, a podcast on it mm-hmm. but it significantly impacts cholesterol Yes, it and, does. And, and enhances good cholesterol. Oh, wow. and, and so you didn't you know don't. that. No, I did not <laughs> no. know that, actually. Um, so the funny thing is is that you guys immediately have kind of gone to the same area. Mm. How funny is it? And I know that, that gynostemma works more than just on that, Steve. In fact, it's mm. we did a podcast on it. It bloody went for an hour. It was unbelievable, like the, the benefits of, of gynostemma. I never knew. One. I mean, wow. I, I've, I, 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 I was across I think most ingredients for fat loss, but I never knew the benefits of gynostemma. And if you're listening to this and you're interested in in, in fat loss, um, please go and listen to the, the latest episode that we did on gynostemma, the mm. breakthrough fat loss mm. um, ingredient, because it's it's something that actually shocked me, and I'm still actually talking to people about it now. But eh, funny, you guys are talking about the same thing. Mm. Yeah. So so the cholesterol thing is obviously massive, and it's that's on both of your number one top thing that you've mentioned mm. to address. Is there anything else that you can do to support healthy production? I mean, what about, and I don't know, I'm just going to throw that and say, no, Jeff, no, nah, you're, you're 
yeah, no. Nah. Uh, what about things like um, Amigas and, and, and the, what else can you do to support healthy, um, you know, uh, cholesterol uh, balances between um, uh, LDL and, and HDL? Yeah, I mean, exercise does that as well. Right. Um, now, exercise takes the LDL and even VLDL, which is very low density lipoprotein, the bad, really, really bad one, and that strips the fat off it and leaves you with another molecule called HDL. Has everyone heard of HDL? Yep. The high density lipoprotein, that's yep. the good one. Yep. So you strip the fat off it by exercise, it burns it off, basically. Yeah. The HDL then goes around the arteries and cleans up the arteries and brings the fats back to the liver. Mm. That's how HDL works. So then it becomes LDL, exercise, burn it off, comes to go. So it strips your arteries clean. The other thing I really like for stripping your arteries clean, yep. and again, go and have some, look at some individual research on this, is pomegranate. Yeah, Pome pomegranate's, pomegranate's got some unbelievable mm. polyphenols and things like in there that for heart health and mm. for cholesterol, specifically arteries, if you're concerned, you've got family history of it, look into incorporating more pomegranate yep. into your diet. But, um, okay, that's interesting, Steve. So It's a good one. It, it's a good one. I mean, you know, cholesterol is – and the reason why we worry about LDL so much is because a woman's largest, you know, their, their, their greatest cause of death over the age of 50 is heart disease. Mm. It, it's been – unfairly termed as a male's Man's disease, disease yeah. but it's really, you know, after a woman hits 50, this is the biggest cause of death. Yeah, right. So that's why we're at LDL. L VL, oh, LDL. LDL drops the cholesterol into the arteries, mm. and if you drop them into the coronary arteries, mm. they get clogged up, and then that might rupture one day, and that is a heart attack. Right. And that blocks the supply of blood to that part of the heart, that part of the heart dies, and 50% of the time you die as well. Yeah. It's quite serious. And... Um, you know, we, 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 we need to manage that as a more of a holistic thing. And um, the way we do that is, of course, is with diet and exercise and all the th things. And there's some, also some great herbs that we can reduce the symptoms of menopause to allow us to get on with our lives too. So you can go to the gym and feel good about it. So there's a few things like that. Yeah, gut health as well. Oh, I yeah. Mean, you, there was this paper. Uh, was beautiful it, um, paper. How the gut microbiome links to menopause and obesity with possible implications for endometrial Something. Something development. Um, and so this <laughs> that was. That sounds very science. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that sounds, sounds like. A, that actually, uh, that something sounds like something I would say. You yeah, can't a, say the for, it's the C word, but it's not what you think. Oh. It's, it's, are you swearing? <laughs> no. Oh, it's not oh, what okay. you think. It was published in the Journal of Clinical Medicine. And it's kind of like just looking at the, the role of gut health mm. in terms of estrogen regulation. Um, you know, we, we've spoken about the estrobilome before and, and all of that. But, yeah, there's, there's, um, it's very important, you know, both from making sure that there isn't chronic inflammation going on in the gut, but also that you have the right species to um, help and regulate um, estrogen levels as you know through all the 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 i want to say reproductive years and perimenopausal mm -hmm. years you know yeah. it's it plays a role in both of those so you know obviously we know that all health starts in the gut mm -hmm. um so again removing those things that where the body is preoccupied with inflammation and mm -hmm. imbalances and because you've got less if you like um resilience i guess because you've you, you, your adrenals are doing a lot of the work. Mm. If you can tidy up your gut, if you can tidy up your your cholesterol levels, mm -hmm. if you can, it, it just means that the body is is going to become um, less burdened and more efficient mm. at then you know creating a, a good environment um, for you to maintain a healthy weight. Yeah, weight level. and then we top it off with some nice herbs that, that, that remove some of the symptoms, and and you become quite, you know, menopausal. The only one that I remember, is, Steve, yeah, was uh, black cohosh. Oh, yeah, is it's that it? Say that that's, 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 that almost tops the list. Is, yeah. What about I, you? I you were great. Yeah, so, yeah. Where's black cohosh? Where, do, where does it come from? Well, that, that's the herb itself. Yeah, I know, but like, is it, what, what, do you know where it comes from? Oh, oh where's it growing? Grown, isn't it? Yeah, where, where's it growing? I can't remember. Oh, I, I think can't it, I think it's a Western either. herb. It's one that we've right. used for a long time. Because it's black cohosh and blue cohosh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, which uh, is two different Can you ones. use blue cohosh for, I've never heard of blue cohosh. Blue cohosh yeah. is more used in uh, labor. Yeah. In uh, helping oh. to, to bring on lab labor. Yes. Really? Yes. Yeah. Huh. Bro, I don't know if I should have said that. I hope there's not going to be a whole bunch of women running out trying to find blue gosh to bring on labor if they're pregnant because you've got to be careful with it. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, so they're slightly different, you know, both yeah. kind of like women or female herbs, but just work a little bit. Because I always, I always thought it was, it was, sex helped to bring out a stuck baby, uh, a hot curry, and a and a and a car ride in a in a bumpy car. Oh, that, that's, that's <laughs> I mean, don't you love the wives' tales, right? It's like, yeah, these these all work. So it's a North American. It's, it's funny, but yeah, it is a it is a North American herb, and and also all the coloured herbs seem to be very effective. So we've got black cohosh and red. 
clover? Saffron. Oh. Yep. Oh, is that a red clover? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just trying to lead you into the next one. <laughs> I'll, do, segue. I'll do the naturopathy <laughs> stuff, all right? You can be the host. I stuffed that, I didn't know. Yeah. I said, like, I've got a highlight there. Oh, you, so you've even got cheat sheets. <laughs> I don't have cheat sheets. Maybe I'm not the half brain after all. Uh, Why are you even here, Elizabeth? I don't know. Let me, let me do your speaking saffron? engagements to saffron's doctors. Saffron's good, that's a good answer. Saffron's red. <laughs> yeah, it's really red. <laughs> Yellow turmeric? Yes. See? I like, I, like, I like how Americans and you say turmeric. You say turmeric. I know, yeah, it's, turmeric. I know it's spelt that way. Yeah. But then why do Australians say turmeric? turmeric. But they say a lot of stuff weird. Oh, we say weird shit. Oh, oh, yeah. Being the stuff. only Australian in the room. Oh, not the only Australian in the room. But Hang on a minute. The only Australian I, on the... I resent that. <laughs> in 1988, yeah, but I went and had oh. my frontal lobotomy and became oh, Australian. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yes, I had my frontal lobotomy in 2000. Yes. yes. Good yeah. on your body. At the Kingston Butter Factory just up the road from here. But, but who do you guys go for in the cricket? This is the most important thing. I don't watch cricket. Oh. Well, that's not very Australian, is it? You no, well, I mean, it, you know, it got ruined when they did the underarm bowling. Do you remember that, Steve? <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. do you remember do. that? Do you, you want to it? bring up cricket? Oh, no, don't. For all of our American <laughs> listeners listening to this at oh, the moment, geez. the worst bit of sporting. Yeah. Oh, but that's what Australians are known for. They're terrible, terrible, terrible sports, terrible sports that was people. Terrible. Terrible sports no, I'm joking. Oh, they're, no, they're, it, they're actually pretty good. It was shocking. But, but that was bad. That Was oh, was that was Ian Chappell that told Greg Chappell to do it? Greg to do underarm. And so what happens, like, imagine playing for our American listeners yeah imagine and in english i they know they probably know about this but imagine yeah. in baseball yeah if if you've got you know babe ruth up at the plate mm-hmm. and then the pitcher and he needs to hit a home run you know yeah. but there's only this is the last ball yep. right so so you know and this is a bit different from they might not understand that so there's only one more pitch to be mm-hmm. and then the pitcher comes up and and um it was it wasn't even babe ruth it was our number 11 it was like our worst bunny it was yeah, what they call a bunny so it was a yeah. really bad batsman, batsman at the crease he had to hit a six off the last ball to win the one day yeah and so instead of compete Greg Chapel, Ian Chapel told yeah. Greg Chapel. I forget one of the chapels told one yeah. of the other chapels. It was Ian told yeah. Greg. <laughs> yep, to to bowl it along the ground, and it's called the underarm ball. Yeah, now, well. could you imagine if that happened? But I'm not talking like doing a softball pitch. I mean, no. the ball actually dribbled Roll. along the ground. Like bowling, ten yeah, pin like bowling. bowling. Yeah. yeah. Oh, at least yeah. Australian cricketers don't use sandpaper on it. Oh, okay. Cut that bit out too. Yeah, <laughs> they do. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he did. I threw myself under the bus there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah that's very oh, interesting. All right, so what were we talking about cricket red about? Red clover. Oh. I don't know how the cricket came That's right, the oh, red. The red. red. Yeah. So red it, clover, phytoestrogen. So pretty yeah. much there's a lot of foods like red clover, like... Um, uh, soy. soy. Maybe yep. talking about more fermented now that's soy. Isoflavones, right? Yeah, that's isoflavones, right? So, yeah. so it's, it's really funny because when I was, I, I, you know, I used to sell supplements, and there was, uh, <laughs> we call them soy boys now, but but no man in there with their salt would have soy because they spoke about the impact of testosterone, mm. the mm. the inhibiting effects of soy on testosterone now i'd actually like to get to the absolute bottom of it now i know that it's truth but how true and how bad it is and if you have fermented soy does that impact the same way Mm. but this woman swore black and blue that the soy protein that she was taking significantly reduced the symptoms of her menopause it does yeah so it's always known for that uh, what's the best type of soy to be taking soy. then? Are you talking tofu? Are you talking yeah, that sort of thing? Fermented soy. So yeah. miso, miso soy. tofu. Yeah. Miso, We're not talking I love about miso soup. Yeah. Should I drink miso soup as a man if I want like yeah. massive testosterone surges? Absolutely. It's not going to inhibit no, my mind. virility. Oh, no. it's just like I don't have any virility. <laughs> 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 not really. <laughs> The, 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 the reason is because it is a phytoestrogen. Estrogen is a very similar chemical to testosterone. Yeah. There's only a little step between and called aromatase. So you don't so, want it binding into the receptors, right? Exactly. And so you can get some cross-receptor contamination. So if I'm eating lo- – if I'm a soy boy, what would happen yeah. to me, Steve? If you have too much soy, mm-hmm. um, then that can block some of the testosterone receptors. So <laughs> blood tests, you'll say normal testosterone, but the receptors yeah. are blocked. So They're full, become, so they can't. Yeah, you become testosterone resistant, if that makes sense. Right. So you've got it in the body, but it's not working as well as it so, should be. So, so guys that are out there 
avoiding soy like the plague, mm. is it an overreaction? It is because, as Elizabeth says, you can have the fermented soy, which 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 doesn't bind. No, okay. It's got the and we know that because you know it's been consumed for hundreds of years. But for women going through menopause, they do want the one that binds. They do, right? And so you can use, you know, like uh, well, in the olden days, we used to use genistein powder, which is mm. a strong phytoestrogen. You used to ride uh, your dinosaur down to the yeah yeah the local right. witch doctor and pick some up. T Rex, yeah. you know, that's right. Yeah, sixty five million years ago on the old T Rex. Yeah. And, and that's actually why we have to be, you know, Steve was like old then. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I was old then. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we have to be careful with raw soy products, right? So uh, raw right. soy would be soy flour, um, right. soy milk, and things like that. But also, mm. like, look, I haven't uh, been in the vegetarian game for a very long time, so I don't know what they do these days. But Are in you the old in the days, game now? no, no, no. I, I was. <laughs> You know, all teenage girls go through a vegetarian Did vegan you? stage. Yes. Oh, that was your. Uh, yeah, I, didn't I, know I thought that they. I, I became a, a v- vegetarian. Oh, so, oh, you disgust me. <laughs> the, 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 the vegetarians can sneak in with the yeah. humans. It's all right. Yeah. My, point, my point was in the old days, a lot of the vegetarians' fake meats were based yeah. on soy. Right? That's right. I don't know if they still do that. Not do dogs. I've, I've seen them out there. They not the, you, you love yeah, a not dog, so. don't you? Yeah. A white dog? They no, have, no, he loves have. a bit of sausage. I'm being, <laughs> he does. He does a little little bit of soy sausage. They, they soy sausages do exist. They, they do. They do exist. <laughs> do you like the soy sausage, Matt? <laughs> you don't. So hang on. Do we want soy sausage or not? Do we? If it's, if it's not fermented, you don't really want to eat too much. No, but 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 I'm, I'm still a little bit confused because I've I've blurred the lines here. So yeah. so so men, no, we don't want too much soy. But fermented soy like tofu, miso, fine. Hmm. For for women that are going through menopause. A little bit of soy sausage. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. I can't say it with a straight face. <laughs> a, little bit, a, little bit of, a little bit of soy is a good thing. A little bit, just a few inches. <laughs> <laughs> is that your medical opinion? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, you're you're in so much trouble. So, in terms then of a little bit of soy, yes. okay, mm. for, for 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 females, for guys, go for the f- fermented miso or um, uh, tofu. Tofu, yeah. And for and for women, that's good as well too, because fermented is obviously good for the gut. Everybody. But as far as soy is concerned, straight soy, that's not a bad idea. Like yeah, no, some soy. if you're looking for okay. that genistein, yeah. you know, that's the one of the big Gen- components. Genistein is a phytoestrogen which, which weakly binds to estrogen receptors, so it's like a woman taking an estrogen supplement that's quite safe. Well, it's interesting because that brings me on to the next point that a lot of women, and this is I'm talking 20 years ago, and some women swear by HRT and other women say it's the worst thing that they've ever done. So, guys, you know, obviously you guys have probably had and have in the past consulted to a lot of people. Um, you know, what's your opinion? Obviously, if it works, it works, and that's do you, great. Do you want to go first with HRT? I'm yeah. So, so for me, you know, it's always about what is best for that person, and, and we don't know what's best. You know, we don't have to live with those symptoms, so uh, there's no judgment here. But for me, doing HRT is a little bit like delaying the inevitable. Right. It's similar to the oral contraceptive pill when you put young girls on uh, hormones because they have irregular periods or they have acne or what have you. Right. You're, you're delaying puberty. That's all you're really doing. And the yeah. same with uh, HRT, you're delaying menopause. Sometimes it may be, you know, it may uh, actually be a good thing for you uh, to do that. But um, I- at the end of the day, um, if you take care of your, um, f- for me, if you take care of your um, adrenals and, and all of the stuff that we spoke about, mm. your diet and all of that, then you should be, um, you know, unless there can obviously be genetic issues as well where it can affect women's ability to, metabolize estrogen or or what have you but i guess for me i would it's not we we jump too quickly to hrt as the solution and i don't think it should be the solution for every single woman so i just think it needs to be a little bit more individualized than what it is yeah um i mean there are other risk factors for Mm. hrt as well that that steve may want to go into yeah i can go into that yeah you absolutely agree with everything you said it it, it, you know i'm not a huge fan because there's better alternatives as as you said which is looking after yourself but let's go with the hrt HRT. Say you want HRT. There's two types of HRTs. There's Premarin, which is a pregnant means you're on sort of. Yeah, know, I always found that fascinating. Uh, the horse's pee is 
uh, used for... Yep. Yeah. But there's the other one, which, of course, is bioidentical hormone replacement. So, so I would go for the uh, human mm. hormones mm-hmm. and in cream form because you don't want to take hormones orally. Most hormones taken orally are bad for your liver. Yeah. So you can take creams and that sort of thing if you want to go HRT path. And, and bioidentical, that's if you want it. Now, the side effects of the other HRT was... The, uh, the, the, the mare's urine? Yeah, the mare's urine is, is quite dangerous because that was, um, that was uh, published 2003 or four, I think, where it, it dramatically increased major disease like cardiovascular risk disease wow. and a few other bad diseases we won't talk about big but c big c bad disease big big c's and um <laughs> so it's it's you know long term when i say long term a few years is not a good idea look if you take it for a, a few months maybe but you know most people are on this stuff for a long time and yeah. it's, it's actually not healthy for you at all yeah. the bioidentical stuff all they do because you can measure it in the blood because mm. it's a, it's the same as the hormones in the body and you just measure it to bring it back to levels to where you are we know is quite healthy for a woman to tolerate low like male hrt testosterone replacement same thing just bring it back to levels that are actually quite healthy yeah. so you can measure those and monitor those women and do it individually as you correctly pointed out mm. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's 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 a good way for HRT to be used, you know, bioidentical. Mm. It's also other ways as well. You know, um, it, you, it doesn't always have to be hormones directly. Mm. Um, you can also use uh, things like, and, and I know that in Australia you still have to get a script for it. Over, uh, in, overseas, I don't think you do need a script for it. But you can also uh, take more the, uh, you know, the top the, the top approach where you can uh, do things like pregnenolone, for instance. Mm. Oh, yeah. So pregnenolone is the precursor to DHEA, which is then the precursor to testosterone and estrogen mm. and progesterone and all of that. So you can kind of like feed it at the top as well um, to help the adrenals kind of like make those hormones as well that would be another way of uh, doing that what about straight dha for women and look i know you know overseas it's it's very readily available i remember and i'm not sure what the laws are now in australia but i remember there was a supplement store down on the gold coast i think that was selling dhea oh Mm. and he got raided and basically through the book thrown at him because he was selling 50 i think it was 50 milligrams of like 50 milligram capsules of DHEA. Yeah. Our friends in the States are probably going, yeah, what now? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. in South Africa you could buy DHEA off the shelf. Right. Right. Where you can. Yeah. I mean, you can get it's it from just Walmart. Year. So in Australia, anyway, so in Australia you're pretty much all screwed unless you go see a doctor and, and get, a, get a prescription for it. Mm. But in terms of in the States, though, if you want DHEA, um, but what about females taking straight DHEA? Because I know you have to be careful, right? right. Yeah, I mean, DHEA... Depends which pathway, then it goes down, right? Yeah, correct mm. me if I'm wrong, uh, Steve, but uh, I believe DHEA will go more towards testosterone and estrogen, so, yeah. whereas pregnenolone kind of like will, will feed more into the yeah. um, progesterone pathway, but still goes to DHEA and then, f- you know, feeds those yeah. other ones. So for me, yeah. that's like the body will decide what it needs to, yeah. to make kind so of thing. That's completely accurate. It's also very good for your brain too, pregnenolone. Mm. So, and, and that's another big one, I think, if we're going to, you know, uh, discuss the, the, the side effects specifically for women obviously you said hot flushes weight gain like those two really really big but the other one is irritability crankiness irrational behavior like outside of the norm mm. right so, so i'm not i'm not making any jokes here whatsoever but i know that obviously tony's mum, she's tony would say she never knew what mum she was going to get the happy mum, mm. the weepy mum, the angry mum, you mm. know the very 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 angry mum. Mm. like you know she just said it was just you know it mm. was Jekyll just and hide yeah a little bit yeah yeah. It's very sad. So what can you do? Is there anything specifically there or is the stuff that we've mentioned, would that address some of that? Well, saffron would be good for that. Then those sort of herbs, um, hypericum, is good as an SSRI. Yeah. Yep. Um, so there's some good herbs and all the gabinergic herbs. All the gabinergic herbs, yeah, like yeah. ashwagandha, yeah, definitely very, good. very, yeah. very helpful. Oh, yeah, absolutely, any of those ones. You know, there, there's, there's some terrific ones out there that, that are more just relaxing you. You know, look, I know there's, there's valerian, which is a, a, a sleep one, but, but even things like passiflora. What about, sort of what about carver? Yeah, carver's good. Mm, yeah. Carver's good. You know, any of those gabinergic herbs that is plenty of them yeah. loads of them uh melissa you know um, Mel- melissa yeah, yeah lemon balm lemon balm sorry i should is talk. it called melissa yeah, yeah melissa, melissa officinalis. Officinalis. Ah. i just could no, i just call her melissa because that's you know my you know, yeah. side chick so just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't get it confused absolutely <laughs> it's, she knows beck yeah it's funny because my side chick his name is, is beck oh. <laughs> 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 anyway, oh, just with, as we're so sharing. Ma- Melissa officinalis, yeah. Because yeah. you, you know what the term officinalis sounds, means? Sounds very official. It is. Well, the term officinalis means it was used in the, in the medical dictionaries. That's where the term came from. Right. Like taraxacum. Is that the BSP, like the, the British? Yeah, the, the, the officinalis was mean it was used medicinally by doctors. Ah. Huh. 
because you know pharmaceuticals are a pretty new thing mm. you know compared to herbs that have been around for thousands of years mm. so you know this is where they get the term officinalis from there you go so yeah the zingiber officinalis sounds very impressive for ginger doesn't it it does <laughs> That's right. yeah yeah so i mean any of those herbs that 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 are, are relaxing, I think, are very good because you, then you're treating that sort of symptomatology thing. But also the estrogenic herbs that, that you were talking about there, the red clover, black cohosh, that boosts estrogen. Now, estrogen is required to convert tryptophan through to serotonin. So to boost that, to keep that serotonin levels, if estrogen levels drop away because you've gone through menopause, mm. to boost that back up, you use those phytoestrogenic herbs. There's a whole list of them here, but the top top one is black cohosh and and red clover, but, but also uh, evening primrose oil, panax ginseng, uh, licorice works, uh, I mentioned passiflora before, red clover, hypericum, fenugreek, fennel, all these things work in the body to uh, are mildly estrogenic. Mm. And of course the soy. So that'll help dramatically. So it's a good one. Um, on top of that, of course, we've got all those other lifestyle management things, but you know, the yogas, the exercises, the, even the hip therapy, those sort of things are very good. Even Tai Chi has been tested to improve menopausal symptoms. So if you can combine some of those in there with some well-researched herbs like we've talked about and those lifestyle changes we've talked about, you know, it's going to manage your transition because you are going to transition. It's not like, no, nah, I won't get menopause, <laughs> like, like you know, I won't get skin wrinkles. Yeah, um, skin you wrinkles know, as you, opposed you, to... Yeah, yeah. What Something wrinkles? else, wrinkles. Yeah, there's no only, only skin problems. Wrinkles, yeah. But but there's lots of diseases you may or may not I've get. I've got wrinkles on the inside of my, my mouth, yeah. Yes. My gum. Yeah. Oh, what causes that, Jeff? What would you, you like to know? Well, what did you, you eat just that? before? What? <laughs> what were you eating just oh, before? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nuts, Steve. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gosh, he's, he's terrible when you come in. Oh, he's not on his. Mind. He is not on his best behaviour. Like I asked him to be. <laughs> I can't Steve. wait to watch it. I want to see if it makes it through. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it'll just be us. Be very boring. Yeah, it'll be. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be you know, ten minutes of podcast. And well, it's, that's a good thing because often I've done podcasts and afterwards I think my, my reputation is ruined. Ruined. <laughs> it's after, ruined. We after they see. We would not do that to <laughs> you, well. No, no Matt. Matt sanitises it and then it goes to to Nadine good. and she sanitises it even further. And before it comes out, this is, you know, realistically, we look like <laughs> shining bastions of moral pinus. We are, though, aren't we? No, not really. Oh, okay. No. Um, yeah. Um, so, all right, so, so yeah, what so else? All those, all those things, like Elizabeth has pointed out, the lifestyle things, getting yourself healthy, preserving your adrenal glands, ashwagandha and herbs like that, you know, they're, they're absolutely vitally important with these estrogenic-style herbs, with these lifestyle things, um, with those estrogenic, um, you know, promoting things mm. to make you, you know, to exercise and to eat well and live well, you're, you're going to manage yourself a lot better. Now, if all that doesn't work up to your expectations, that's when you look at the HRT, and I'd recommend the human hormones, yep. you know, if you want for a short period of time. Because, mm -hmm. you know, human hormones have been in our body since we were born. Mm. So they're not a foreign hormone. Mm. And I'll probably just add something there because you mm. kind of touched a little bit on the, on the creams and, and yeah. things like that. And we didn't really talk about this specific menopausal symptoms, symptom, which is vaginal dryness, right? And that kind of like it's is got to do with that drop in estrogen. Mm. And so um, the, the, I've had like, you know, women who are sometimes concerned because you can get like a, a, a estrogen cream, a, a topical cream that you can apply to help with that. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of women, you know, who are scared of the C word, you know, are very reluctant in terms of taking hormones and even something like uh, a topical cream. But um, as far as, uh, as, as I'm aware from all the current research, that only uh, kind of, it, do, it doesn't go systemic. Mm. It only actually works uh, 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 locally, you know, where it's applied to the area. So mm -hmm. for women who are concerned about, you know, repercussions, I guess, of um, oral hormone replacement therapy, they don't need to be as concerned with creams and, and things like that. That's important. That's good. Yeah. That's a really good good point. Yeah, that's good. And, and of course, there's different types of estrogen. I don't know if they even put estrogen. I know there are estrogen oh, yeah. creams. Um, there is different got, types, yeah. yeah. So there's um, like a estrone, which is the predominant one that yep. gets produced by the uh, adrenals during mm. menopause. Mm -hmm. Then you've got estradiol, which is the most potent one that yeah. you mentioned earlier, Steve. Mm. Yep. Uh, <laughs> then you get estriol, which is mm. the one produced in pregnancy. Mm. And there's a fourth one called, called estatrol, which I've ne never heard of, but that's also a pregnancy estrogen mm. as well. But it's, it's essentially the estradiol, I think that's kind of like what they what they put into bioidentical hormones. Yes, it is. My dad had a girl once that had that 
Sorry? Easter troll. <laughs> Easter troll. <laughs> yeah. Sounds horrible, doesn't she it? She had it Easter troll. Yeah, she was an Easter troll. She was an Easter troll. <laughs> <laughs> she was an Easter troll, like the Easter bunny. <laughs> but she, oh, jeez. But she wasn't very He's nice. You remember for exams if you remember. Yeah. What are the estrogens? Yeah. You know, the Easter troll. Easter troll. You never forget that one. No. no. That's only that really one. a pregnancy no. one. Yeah. Are you fine with that one? Estradiol is aromatized testosterone. Yeah, and that's the, yeah, as you say, the strongest one. Is yeah, it? that's the 16, one. I forget. What is it, 16? Well, it goes into 16, 4, or 2 hydroxyestrone, yeah. and, yeah. and they're, they're the... Very um, potent. Yeah, you, you want the twos. You want, yeah. you want yeah. more of the twos. But you, you don't want to want... detoxify the 16, right? Yeah. Yeah. So... so healthy vegetable diet. Yeah, that, that will help. Real simple. There's, there's a whole podcast on just that, but... Well, guys, we've cut a lot of ground. Is there anything else you want to add in finishing, or do you think we've covered it? I think we've covered most things. Have you got anything to add? No, I don't really have anything to add. I no. think it's, uh, I think, you know, the only thing that I'd probably add is more like, uh, you know, I don't think women should be scared of going mm. through menopause. It's, uh, you know, as, as women, we have the luxury of going through all these incredible phases, um, you know, uh, through through our lives, you know, as mm. our hormones change, and I think I think menopause has been a bit of a in the past at least a bit of a dirty word. Yeah. Mm. And I just think no, we, women, we should embrace it. It's it's uh, it's the next phase of our lives. It's not mm. something to be scared of. Yeah, mm. yeah. 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 Sure. I, I guess if you can focus on the positives as well too. So, yeah. you know. Uh, not that annoying time of the month. Uh, yeah. you know, you're getting There's past that as well positives. too. For, for, for some people, so Gee, men are boring, aren't they? When, <coughs> well, we get you put it. We like get andropause, but on a scale of like change, realistically, I mean, menopause is probably depending on the person, yeah. somewhere between a five and a ten. Yeah. Um, whereas for andropause, for the most m- most men go through it and they don't really even notice it's, so much. It, it just drops one to two percent testosterone every year, and that's sort of our andropause. So it starts happening at the age of nineteen. Yeah, they don't get yeah. all of that brain stuff happening nah. all at the same time. Mm-hmm. That, that's right. We, we, women basically <laughs> hormonally, and I don't want to sound dramatic, but fall off a, a cliff hormonally. Mm, mm. So it's quite dramatic. Men just sort of slowly fall slowly down the fade. cliff like Homer Simpson Stroll does. Stroll down. Yeah, dump, yeah, dump, just, dump, dump. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's how we go through life. And, and we start dump. from quite a low base as well. I mean, like, you know, women are like right yeah. up here and like men are just... Yeah. See, that was... that was. Um, I think I'm allowed to say that. And you are. Yeah, I think I... Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. That was a really good podcast. Um, and, um, you know, we'll be back with some more next week. Awesome. Thanks, Elizabeth. Yeah, thank thanks, you. Yeah. Bye, thanks, mate. I think it might have been the nuts. Yeah. Seriously, you know when you, you yeah, yeah. get that. <laughs> yeah, nuts in your mouth. Sorry. Let's not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, I knew I you were going to say that, Steve. Well, while we're yeah, in a cut, I have just, to get this. Yeah, so it's like down. a red flag to a bull, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? It's like, it I'm just going to leave this here. Oh, <laughs> Tramples all over it. Couldn't do it. Couldn't leave that. Uh, I was trying to. I was thinking, oh, this was here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when yeah. did you ever care that you lose my was here? The fascination starts early and it never stops. <laughs> it doesn't, does mm. it? Mm. No. So. It's, it's one of those things. Cut that. <laughs> you cut that. Uh, you can't cut that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just red pen. Oh, it's just red pen everywhere. Oh, oh, wow. I mean, if half of this made it, I don't think I'd make it to the parking lot. Age <laughs> 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 it then, you know. Some of <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. No, well, not was... you. I know you wouldn't. <laughs> but. No, don't say I it. think that's one of your fantasies. Vegetarian. Dude, no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not. Everyone likes Is their that... sausage, don't they? No, it's going to Steve barbecue. You're taking I'm it too far. Barbecue. No, but <laughs> oh, Steve, I'm going to pray for you. Yeah, yeah. you need to. Yeah, I think. no, right. <laughs> yeah. <people. laughs> so, so do do we want our 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 our, our menopausal women experimenting with sausage? That's all I want. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Do we want? Okay, it's down in my system, person. Matt. I'm sorry, Matt. I'm uh, sorry. Just cut it. So, okay, ready? All right, you ready? Yeah.